Aloha, it's 365 Hawaii. With Eric and Julie Zemelis, and behind us is Keaho Bay. And what we're doing today, Eric? Well, today we're going to take you to all the places that you can get in the ocean. And a few that look like you can, but you can't. So it's kind of a, because everybody always asks us, gee, where can we get in the ocean? And there's a little misconception here that the uh, there's a beach on every block. Right. So uh, one of the reasons we're doing this video also is because we actually have uh, family visiting and they have kids and they asked us where can we get into the water to go snorkeling safely and uh, we figured that that might be a question a lot of you guys might ask yourselves and also if you have if you're living here and you have friends coming you can give them this video because we're going to show you from Keho all the way to the south to Kua all the way to the north and give you a rating system on how easy it is to get in, what is like the uh, the fun value once you get there, and uh, when you should be wearing your uh, reef shoes, because sometimes some of these beaches are a little delicate on your little Don't have posies. sand, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I, well that was a good explanation, what's gonna happen, that's better than I could have done. So uh, we're gonna start here uh, with this one. So here, Keho Bay, ready? Let's do it. Okay, Keahoe Bay is actually known for a few things. One is the fact that it's the launch point for the Keahoe uh, Canoe Club. And so you can see right behind us, they are actually just coming back from a uh, outing. Um, the uh, Canoe Club lets uh, outside people be able to go for some of the uh, paddling. You can find out more at KehoeCanoeClub.com. But this is a 12 man, so that way it takes a little less effort, a little more friendly for those of us who are not maybe professional paddlers. But also another thing about Keaho Bay is that right across the way is the Outrigger. So this is one of the actually one of the resorts that doesn't have a beach, uh, but you can get in the ocean as we're going to show you. Uh, but also this place is a historical area. This is where Kamehameha the Third was born. Um, if you get a chance to come and do a historical tour in this area, it's amazing. You'll find out how much information is here about the thousands of wines that used to live here. So let's go check out the water. Okay, so here we are where you would really get in. Uh, the uh, sand here is not really a sandy beach and there's a lot of sharp rocks here. And it is not the most optimum swimming beach, but it is really good for snorkeling. And uh, what you do is you kind of head out that way and you head, it's about a four eighth of a mile out to the end of the uh, uh, head to the Akeho Bay there, and there's the Outrigger, and if you kind of head over to the Outrigger, there's some great spots to snorkel out there. I used to know some people that used to just swim this daily. They would just go out and come back. It's a, it's good. Uh, it's not as well known, so it won't be as crowded, but uh, just an interesting place to go. Okay, so the good news is you don't really need a big four-wheel drive to go to most of these beaches. There's only one that has a little bit of rough if you have a car with at least adequate ground clearance you can get there. But uh, this is the truck, so I drive it around, so that's what we're driving today, but you don't need So here we are at Ka'alu'u Beach Park, which is also in Keho, very short distance from Keho Bay. Totally different experience here. Um, this is one of the most popular snorkeling areas in all of Hawaii, and uh, they get thousands of visitors every year. Um, so there's there's some rules here. Uh, one is making sure that you wear safe, reef safe sunscreen, and they have it for free here in the dispensers. And our 365 Hawaii Community Foundation actually just raised $2,000 to keep those dispensers filled so you guys can have fresh and good, safe sunscreen so that you don't hurt the coral out here. Also, obviously, do not step all over the coral. Um, even if you have to like adjust your mask, they do have places right out here that will let you stand there and do that. Um, this is a good place, though, for people who are learning how to snorkel to be able to stand up, put their mask on, look in the thing. Tons of fish here. Um, there's also lots of turtles. And so there's the second or third thing you're going to tell you is don't touch the turtles. Uh, you got to keep a healthy distance back from the turtles. But also, speaking of turtles, they feed off of the algae that's over on this side of the bay. We've done a couple of videos here and we haven't really mentioned that after um, the pandemic when nobody was here they realized that when the algae grew back 
then the sea turtles came back too. So they were trying to keep people off of stepping all over that and killing that algae so it becomes a nice feeding area for the turtles so you guys can see more turtles. Uh, but in terms of getting in and out of here, this is a good reef shoe experience. Um, where are those reef shoe things that you can wear um, in your uh, snorkels? Um, that way when you're walking this channel to get through here, which is kind of, you know, I mean, it's a little rocky, um, but then you can just slip your um, feet right into your um, flippers and then go off for a nice snorkel around the bay. Um, I will say though that uh, if you can get here early in the morning or come later and watch a sunset there's not as many people um, peak time for people to be here is usually 10 30 in the morning uh, we always tell people too that what you can buy here are rash guards they're basically the full length sleeved um, sun shirts that you can wear and that way you don't have to put sunscreen all over your little body um, we have our cousins are here and they are doing the whole like Ugh, sunscreen everywhere just skip it put a little on your face a rash guard and don't stay on the sun for three hours uh, but this definitely is a must do if you guys are coming to Hawaii for the first time and you want to see tropical fish really close to town okay so there is a reason why this place is always so crowded it is one of the few places in Hawaii where you can literally put on your snorkel put on your fins you don't even leave fins because you're only going like 200 yards out you're not going very far but all the fish you can see and they're all used to being with people so they come up they're like yeah right yeah hey how's it going little trigger fish kind of swim right by you you gotta watch out for those trigger fish they like on when they're territorial when they have their nesting season and they can put little nips on your uh, fingers nothing bad those are the fish that i can't pronounce okay so one more thing here is that uh they, they, they have coral spawning season and it's at the end of may so they've already designated a time when this is going to happen and it's the end of may and so they're going to be closing it for about a week so nobody uh, can get in here and the coral can repopulate is what they're going to do Okay, so here we are at Magic, also known as La Aloha, and it is a low tide day and the sand is just coming back. We've been to this beach quite often and uh, it can be anywhere from the sand going all the way up to the lifeguard stand to no sand at all. So it's good to see that there's enough for the people in here. A little crowded here for spring break, but this is our main beach here in town. If you want to know of the best, you know, white sand beach, this is it. And when it gets a little more sand, it's beautiful, it's a great wind, the waves aren't too big, and it's just, it's the place to come. The only downfall of this beach is it's sort of small, and so there's a lot of people in a small area. That's the downfall. In terms of the things that we're talking about, what makes beaches good and bad, um, a few good things here is that you see the lifeguard tower behind me. Those guys are active here, because the bad thing is, is that the waves come up and they crash on people who are unaware of how this system works here. Um, if you haven't seen my other videos, let me tell you guys, you gotta be careful of magics because the waves come up and they crash down, straight down. They don't come rolling in like Waikiki or California. But one of the things, you do not have to wear your little reefy shoes when you're here when all the sand is in because it is super soft white and you can walk right out and it's super white soft like as far as you can stand, it's so great. Uh, but also keep in mind that there is great snorkeling here, but don't come snorkeling on a high wave day, you'll go against the reef. But there is some beautiful uh, um, fish to be seen right in front of Magic's Grill, which is a great restaurant to have your drinks and your food. Um, and also around that corner, it's called Mile 4 Beach. Um, it's shallow, but there's a ton of tang there. So um, awesome place if it's a nice, beautiful day, not a high surf. This is actually not that bad. Everyone's out here. It's like the pool is open here right now. This is a great time to be here. Okay, so this is Tunnel's Beach, and this one is a big psych for all you guys. It looks like a beautiful beach, but it's not a good swimming beach. The only people that go here are the boogie boarders when the waves are up, and a few surfers and things like that. But in terms of going into the water, the problem with this beach is the sand ends right where the water begins. So getting in there is a little tricky. One thing you have to watch out for in Hawaii, in particular here in Kona, is the vana. And it's uh, they have little prickly things, and you can easily step on one of those. And it takes I take six weeks to get them out of your skin. You can't pull them out because they literally disintegrate in your skin. You got purple little dots all over. So not the best for you. But it's a beautiful place. This is a good sunset place. We come here all the time for sunsets. And and uh, 
that's where we are with this beach. Speaking of showers, uh, this one has a shower, even though theoretically you're not supposed to go swimming too much, but when you come out of the water and you're sandy, great shower. Um, we also forgot to mention that they do have showers at both Ka'alu'u Beach Park as well as Magic Sands. So uh, those are good amenities along with bathrooms. One of my favorite things actually is being right here at Kailua Bay. It is so blue and you get a chance to have the waves come up and hit the wall sometimes, which is fun to watch the tourists get hit. Uh, but also uh, lots of energy down here. All the restaurants are down here and um, the swimming here. Um, it is fun. I like it because you can walk right in and go snorkeling from here. Uh, but uh, you have to uh, also be mindful of launching boats here. But uh, if you like just to come here and sit on the seawall, for that blue, blue water. Do that or go to one of the restaurants right here. Good shopper. Water is so blue here. It is shallow and it's light blue because there's so much sand out here. And then Eric almost gets it. Um, this is getting close to high tide, uh, but you can come out here and you can walk and you can go at least six feet, almost deep soft soft sand before you start to launch off and go snorkeling which is pretty good here um there is coral and everything else but it's at a deeper level you're probably not going to stand on it but it's a great place for kids bring your uh floaty toys here people love just to float around here um we get obviously you get some people who jump off of the uh, cruise ship into the ocean on wednesdays uh, but the um the cool thing about this too is if you can go out and follow what the Ironmen do, following the buoys all the way out into the bay, you can also wrap around the front of um, that area and get some more snorkeling in. Um, I personally love to come out here with my friends and go snorkeling swimming because it's just an easy way to get in the water. Uh, parking sometimes can be a bugger, but uh, there's no um, lifeguard, but there are bathrooms. Okay, what makes this beach interesting, of course, is Iron Man. This is the start of the Iron Man race. They get in here, they make a huge staircase, they come in, they go out, they have people helping us, they don't slip and slide while they're doing it. But when they do Iron Man, they literally swim one mile out that way. And if you guys want to do uh, sort of a kind of simulation of that, they do have buoys that go about a half a mile out, and there are white buoys and you go straight on out, which is pretty cool. So that is what makes this beach interesting. This is Kamakahonu Beach in front of the courtyard by Marriott. And um, the guests can use this beach, but so can you. Uh, because don't forget, the entire coastline is open to the public. So uh, you, know, you can bring your family, your friends, everything else. They don't want you to use their chase lounges, but this is a really nice little kiki beach. Um, when we have big surf, it hardly ever is surfy here, so kids can play here all the time. Um, I will say though that the uh, cold water, the fresh cold water drains through the night, the uh, rocks here, so it's a little chilly. Um, and the water clarity you know, over near the uh, beach is a little weird. But as you go further out and go out front of the bay, um, some really great snorkeling. And again, it's a super safe. And you can see from behind me, it just looks like the perfect place to spend your uh, Easter break uh, sitting in the sun. Uh, in terms of sand, uh, this is soft sand, not the softest sand. It's actually, sometimes people say it's actually important. Uh, but there's three things you should know about this. There are no lifeguards here, here or on the pier side. Also, um, there is bathrooms in the middle of the two um, uh, beaches. And also, uh, when you do come here, um, parking is obviously easy if you're a guest of the hotel. But again, that is kind of an issue of trying to find good parking if you want to come to this beach. Okay, this is another one of those beaches that is a beautiful beach to come to, but not a good swimming beach. And it is called Old A's, and it used to be the runway back a long, long time ago for Kona, and now they've made a park out of it. And it's got a beautiful coastline, and there's little areas where you can get into the water to a point, because if you go too far, you get into the big rocks, and again, the Vana we were talking about earlier. But if they've got a kid, there's some great places we'll show you in a minute where you can take them. But it's a good place to come and it's a great place for sunset. So I love this beach the most because I come down here and I meditate and I walk up and down through here while I'm just thinking about the world and I get some great thoughts. And the sand here is actually soft and there's always sand here. Uh, the tide does come up to the top sometimes and when it's down and low, 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 it's not very pretty. But um, the energy here is awesome and a Hawaiian friend of mine said, the energy here is light and happy because 
hundreds of years of children playing in these tide pools. And so it's been nice to like, discover this place and kind of get a chance to kind of tap into the energy here. And uh, like Eric said, great place for sunset. Um, but you know what? That you can float around in here and floaty toys. I've done it with my friends. So uh, maybe you can't go swimming, but you can definitely get in the water. I like this pond too. I sit here and I float around and I watch the waves come in and you can just like literally get your float on and it's so warm. Anyway, um, if you want kids to want to swim in these ponds, actually if you go north, you follow this trail through Old Airport North behind the football field. And then there are really big ponds. I mean, kids can swim in there. It's like seven feet deep. And that's where a lot of people go when we have high surf. So when they say the Kiki Ponds, um, that is usually the big ones. I mean, we like coming here because you can park like two minutes, not even two minutes, like right there. Come out here and you're there. The other one, you have to walk in a bit through the, you know, over the field. Um, but uh, people do spend like a whole day there. They have Sandy Beach. Um, it's a nice place for families. Okay, so when I was telling you guys how great this place was, Eric's like, oh, well now you've sold it so good, now I gotta show it to you. So we walked over here and it's actually a beautiful day to be here. Um, tide's halfway up. Um, you can see behind me, there's like, um, lots of places for kids and families to sit in the sand. Um, no lifeguard. Uh, good place to um, be able to come and spend all day. Uh, sunsets from here are beautiful because the light from the sun bounces off these beautiful ponds. So if you like photography, good one. And also what I like about it too is again, it's deep enough to stand in so you can get nice and cool, but no one's gonna be like, you know, floundering around in deep water here. And uh, it's soft so you can bring those uh, uh, water shoes or not because there's lots of sand inside these tide pools as well. So we are going down now into Kua Bay and we have been showing you guys all the blue water all afternoon. It was kind of hot, kind of sunny. We're finally down here. <laughs> and I'm like, can we go in the water yet, Eric? And he's like, oh, after we finish filming, Julie. That's and I'm exactly like, oh, right? when is that, honey? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, I'm taking one for the, uh, the team here for all of you guys to miss all these beautiful blue water experiences just to get these videos for you. But uh, this is what we do when we uh, work for you guys to give you guys the good stuff, right? Right. So here we are at Kua Bay. And uh, as you guys know, Kua Bay is the one of the best beaches on TripAdvisor, I would say it's the star of all the beaches we've been to today. I mean, not that we've been to that many great ones. It's just that this is the beach in Kona. And it's not totally in Kona. It's a little outside, but you guys get the idea. Yeah, and you guys saw the uh, line of cars that parked all the way out there. Uh, spring break is in full swing right now. But that's how it always is during the summer uh, weekends, too. Yeah. So... Okay. Uh, we just a side note. We also did a video. We've done a couple of videos on here. We did one over the winter with the no sand. If you guys want to see with no sand, we heard the sand's back. So let's go check out, see how much sand is back on top of that. We'll go take a look. And our final beach is one more after this. Yep, and uh, I was here uh, about a week ago with my cousins, and uh, we were under the water, and I could hear a little bit of whale song still. So uh, we're now in mid-April. So uh, you know they're still here, but uh, let's see if we can go out there and see at least how the sand's going. Let's go. So Kua Bay does have a shower and it also has bathrooms. Um, it helps uh, to have these kinds of facilities when you're thinking about coming to the beach all day long. And uh, this is um, relatively a, a new remodel on this bathroom and it also has fresh water so you can refill your uh, water bottles. white gold the softest sand oh it's the best you guys in fact i don't know if you realize this but uh, a lot of the soft white sand is actually created from uh parrot fish and other fish uh, that are eating the coral and then they poop it out so that's what you sit on but that's okay um uh, but the uh, <laughs> the soft sand 
is the biggest draw for this and obviously this blue blue water when the uh, sand is still kind of trying to come back up off the beach it's sitting out here looking all blue and gorgeous um other things too if you guys do come um the far right hand side of the far northern part of the uh, beach usually you find a little bit more space and if you really want a beautiful view get up on top of those rocks and look back it's bomb diggity um also getting here first thing in the morning for everybody's here is awesome and bring your snorkel because right in front of where i'm standing is some of the best snorkeling they've got a ton of fish no one even knows it in fact i was just here this week and we saw a turtle right there and a couple hundred fish um, but also you can snorkel further out just don't go too far out because there is a current and it will pull you out so try and stay kind of close to the ocean i mean the beach here um, and also when the t when the um, waves are up at this beach people get hurt so never turn your back to the ocean and make sure that you are not alone out there and uh, you're watching what's going on with the waves and the surge. And the lifeguard is actually at this beach um, and he's usually you know, telling you how things are going to be. Listen to him. But this is a uh, gem of a place to come to. This is our seventh destination today, our last beach. And uh, there is a beach down here, which is good to see. The only downfall about this place is the fact that you have to go over this road to get here. Half of it is paved and half of it is kind of crunchy lava. And somebody has been telling me that the road is getting worse. So uh, more trucks only. Right. This so um, if you guys are bringing a low profile vehicle, you're probably going to get scraped up. Uh, but uh, you don't necessarily, like I said, you don't need a big old fat truck, but just be aware. Because when Eric and some I first did this. ground clearance. You right, just need some ground. Right. So when Eric and I first did this, like back like in 2005. <laughs> Two that, yep. We, right? took the, we took our lowered minivan. Lowered was the key to that one. And I bounced on the exhaust a whole bunch of time on this, this yes, particular. Yes, the kids were screaming like, ah, because it was going. <laughs> I'm like, why are we doing this? Yeah. But you know what, though? Um, when you get through all the crunch, um, it's really pretty. Uh, but I've also parked out here and actually have taken my bike in. So you can actually bike with a four wheel, like a, what's it called, a, a mountain bike. Yep. Um, so that way, you know, at least you get a chance to see the, um, the pretty, but you don't have to like mess up your car. Uh, but um, speaking of an opportunity to learn more about the island, uh, Eric and I have a few Facebook pages that let people know about moving to Hawaii and also buying real estate. Uh, we're with Real Broker. We both have real estate li licenses. We like to sell real estate. Um, and uh, we have uh, free guides. So if you guys want to, you can join the 365 Ohana. Go to 365hawaiiliving.com and you can join the Ohana and then it gives you access to two free books I wrote, How to Move to Kona and The Insider's Guide to Buying Real Estate on Hawaii Island. We also have private Facebook groups to get you guys uh, you know, with more information about buying and selling and also uh community groups my 365 Kona newbie groups has over 3,000 people in it we create volunteer opportunities for you to give back to the island and also give a chance to people for uh friendships and also we do events so um support our channel we are the sponsors of this channel <laughs> the right. only ones you forgot the one important thing is we also have a youtube channel on real estate 365 hawaii real estate minutes so that's the other way you go check out right so uh we're gonna hop in this uh souped up uh, truck and go and see all the uh yeah the and this outside. time we're gonna jump in the water we we like i said julie's been waiting to do it because we didn't want to get all wet and sticky it's and now like i'm low 3 30 we yeah. started just at like but, 10. <laughs> so we, we were one thing we were talking about which is kind of interesting here is that when we first got here the, remember the vlog used to be going since 1983 and it went on for just it just ended in like 2018. Uh, so we did a video on beaches long ago and we had to wait like three weeks to get the perfect day. Today is that day. And today is, it's just the way a lot of the time. That's the yeah. beauty of no it. Vog, we, no vlog. Uh, but... I'll tell you guys, uh, we've had wind, high wind warnings. We've had uh, rain. So today is really seriously one of the most beautiful days I've had in like weeks. So I'm glad you guys get a chance to see it. Yeah. So let's go check it out. Okay, so the joke is, why would you put speed bumps out when it already has been a rocky, shitty road? And uh, double speed bumps, no less. Eric says that he's pretty sure that nowhere else on this island can you get a double speed bump. So uh, he's going to hit it. I think we've made fun of these before, but... Uh, uh, yeah, and it's only like in a very short section, and they put three in. Why? Why? We are at 
at the end of the road, and there are two parts to this speech. One is the one you drive straight to, which is this one. And again, there's not really any easy way into the water here. You can kind of work your way in, but it's not a, a nice beach over here. The nice beach is on the other side. We're going to go to that one in a minute. But this one has the toilets and the beautiful picnic benches, and you're, it's a really nice place. You just can't get the water. So uh, interesting how there's all these different little nuances to beaches around here. One of the reasons we walked over on this side of the beach is because when we were driving in, I can see like five spouting whales right there. So I wanted to come and see if I could do a little whale watching and show you guys also the side. Um, but uh, we'll head to that side and go swimming, but uh, I'm going to stay here for a few more minutes looking for my little whale friends. you can find anything better than being in Hawaii basically by yourself on the white sand beach with palm trees all around. Nah, I'm not too sure it gets much better than this. I will say of course Hua Bay has the beautiful blue and the nice soft sand but sometimes being in a place where you can just be with nobody there is value in that and Eric's gonna tell you why he thinks there's no one here. Coming in of course and there were some drop-offs about that big where the pavement went to the non-pavement and it seems to be getting worse. So those people are right. Yes, it is a little more worse for bits. But there's a good news, dude. If you can get here, there's nobody. Like Julie was saying, it's a perfect place. So that's one of the beauties. The other thing that's interesting about this beach is that there are sands that go into the water pretty deep and then it sort of turns to rock. So you can kind of navigate your way in. It's not like white sand all the way out for 50 or 100 feet. It's about 30 or 40 feet, but enough to get up there and get swimming and then kind of miss, you know, miss the little lava parts that are out there. But it's, uh, it's definitely a nice beach. And this beach is calmer than a lot of other places because the uh, it's in a little bay and we don't get the waves like they do on some of the other ones. It's our turn to go in now. Woo. 